junkyard blower versus cheap turbo. Which one would you pick for your 4.8 if you're looking to make 500 horsepower? Which way do you go? Which one makes better boost? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we got a cool comparison. We got cheap blowers versus cheap turbos. Both of them run on a 4.8 liter LS motor. We have a Junkyard M90 supercharger and an equally inexpensive GT45 turbo. And we want to compare them to find out which one would you choose to make a little over 500 horsepower. They do it differently. Let's check it out. Okay, guys, let's jump right in. We're going to compare a blower versus a turbo on a 4.8 liter. And the motors are the same. At least it's the same short block and long block and all that stuff. But we did reconfigure it a little bit. And it goes to show you what happens and how much easier it is to get power from one combination to the other and what you have to do to optimize power production. We didn't do maximum efforts on either one of these. In fact, with an M90 supercharger, we've made over 650 horsepower. And with the GT45, we've made over 750 horsepower. So in absolute terms, the turbo would definitely support more power than the M90. But this is a comparison between two combinations that made, you know, 520, 530, that kind of thing. So our 4.8 liter was an LR4 junkyard 48 like all the good ones are 706 heads this one had a camshaft upgrade on it it was a brian tooley racing truck norris nsr camshaft the other thing we did is we ran this thing naturally aspirated with a holly high ram and you might be asking yourself richard why on earth would you run why would you combine the high ram <laughs> and run it with a truck norris camshaft which is a fairly mild camshaft you know better or, or more higher rpm on a 4.8 than a 5.3 certainly, but why would you put the high ram on it? And the reason for that is because the high ram is what we would later use and adapt the M90 supercharger to because the adapter plate is designed to take the M90 and adapt it to either a Holly high ram or a Holly low ram. And in, uh, in our case, a high ram makes more power because it has longer runners than a low ram does. So here's what we did. We had our 4.8, we had long tube headers on it. We had a Holly HP management system. We ran it the way that we do normally with a Mazira electric water pump and tuned it you know optimized the tune for our combination we ran this on e85 only because we would later be adding the blower and we would be adding boost to it it just made things easier but run basically a 4.8 liter with a with a holly high ram manifold and a 102 millimeter throttle body and then long tube headers and the btr camshaft our 4.8 produced 411 horsepower and wanted to make peak power out there fairly far, out, out near 7,000 RPM, 68 or 6,900, and 355 foot-pounds of torque. Now, this was not a great 4.8. <laughs> this was the one that I had all the problems with, and so it was probably a little softer than they normally are. But here's what happened when we added our supercharger. This is the M90. You can see we got big gains everywhere, and this was about nine, nine, nine and a half pounds of total boost. And we made 537 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 491 foot-pounds of torque. See, it's over 450 horsepower through most of the curve. And this is what you would expect from a positive displacement supercharger because it has like immediate boost response. But, and we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at this when we compare it to the turbo combination. The one thing that it did have was the, the high ram, even though it's longer runners than the low ram, it's still not nearly as long as the 4.8 liter, the factory truck manifold, and that's gonna come into play, but let's take a look at the turbo. Okay, for all you turbo fans out there, <laughs> this is gonna illustrate why turbocharging the LS is probably more popular than putting a supercharger on there, particularly with the M90, because the M90, we need this adapter plate from the guys at Demuse Engineering, and it works very well, and it might be a good choice for a guy putting, um, you know, guys that don't wanna do turbos, for an application like I have for my stock truck, just put it on a stock 5.3 or 4.8 and it works pretty well. But this shows why the turbo is so popular. We started off the same 4.8 liter. It was the LR4 factory 706 heads. This one did have valve springs on it because later on we would be putting camshafts in it. But what we did to start off with is we ran the turbo with the stock combination. So we got the stock bottom end. This thing I think didn't even have ring gap in it at the time. We had the 706 heads. We did have valve springs on it. We had the long runner factory truck intake manifold. We had long tube headers the way that we always run it. It had 80 pound injectors again, because we would be running the turbo on this combination. 
we ran the Holly HP management system and ran the thing naturally aspirated before we added a single turbo to it. And we're gonna show you how easy it was to exceed 500 horsepower without even modifying the motor at all, including a camshaft. And it shows, you know, kind of the superiority, let's say, of the amount of power that you can get from a turbo as compared to a blower, but there's also something else to consider. So we're gonna take a look at that. So we ran the thing naturally aspirated, it made 336 horsepower and 345 foot pounds of torque, just basically a stock 4.8 liter running fairly good, but with um, long tube headers on it an optimized tune and running it cold. Here's what happened when we added our single turbo. You could see, <laughs> not surprisingly what big power gains so there's a couple of things first of all let's take a look at the peak power we made 524 or 5 horsepower and a similar amount of torque five actually a little bit more 529 foot pounds because just like we did na we made a little bit more torque than we did horsepower because we ran the same boost level and as i have said many times what you do is you just raise the whole power curve the amount that you have boost present for and it works with any camshaft in any combination so we were able to make near what the blower did but and we're going to compare these two in just a minute but the interesting thing is we're able to do this without resorting to a camshaft and actually we did it at a lower boost level so the turbo was able to make what the blower did in terms of peak power and made a pretty uh, sizable bit more torque um, but it was able to do that with no camshaft you know because the camshaft obviously is going to improve the thing in a and so the multiplier gets multiplied out and we make more power when we add a turbo to it it was able to do it at a lower boost level and when we compare these two you'll be able to see the long runner intake manifold also played a big factor in the differences of the power curves of these two combinations. But obviously fairly easy to get, you know, more than 500 horsepower from a 4.8 with a turbo or a blower. But now let's compare the two. Okay, now let's take a look at a comparison between the supercharged combination, the supercharged 4.8 liter and the turbocharged 4.8 liter. And there's a lot to look at here because it's pretty cool. So this is our supercharged combination, it had the M90 blower on it. It had, it, it actually had a slightly bigger camshaft when we ran it supercharged that I didn't mention previously. It had a BTR uh, hot rod cam in it when we ran it with a blower, because then we're gonna talk about this, this is one way to get the supercharger to make more power, or actually really to flow more, is if you make the naturally aspirated combination more powerful, and want to process more of the air, what we see is a change in boost. The boost drops, the airflow goes up, and the thing makes more power. So you make more NA power and put the blower on, it makes more boosted power, and that's exactly what we did. So the thing made 537 horsepower and 491 foot-pounds. And here is what the turbo combination looked like. And you can see that the turbo combination, a couple of things. First of all, let's start off down low. If we look down low, the supercharged combination made more power than the turbo combination. And this is interesting for two reasons. One, we kind of would expect this because of the immediate boost response of a positive displacement supercharger. But here are a couple other things to think about, and this will come into play later on. If we think about two things, one, that the supercharged combination had a very, very short runner intake manifold. Well, not terribly short, not like a lot of factory ones are, but it had the high ram as compared to the long runner factory truck intake manifold that we use on the turbo combination. So you'd think that the, sh the long runner turbo combination would make more low speed power because it has long runners, but we didn't see that. And we didn't see that because the uh, supercharged combination had more boost. The other thing is we had a much bigger camshaft in the supercharged combination, which would tend to hurt low speed power. And yet it's still making more low speed power. And again, it's it's all that immediate boost response, even though we handicapped it with basically two things, runner length and cam timing, it still did better than the turbo down low. But we see from 3,800 or so on up, especially in the middle part of the curve, that we see that the turbo combination actually made a lot more torque. And in my opinion, that is two things like we talked about earlier. That's definitely the runner length of the intake manifold. We see that a truck intake manifold makes a lot more mid-range power than a high ram does. A high ram might, and not so much on a 4.8 because it's a small displacement motor, but might make more ultimate peak power if you compare them in exactly the same configuration. But the long runner truck manifold is going to make a lot more <laughs> a lot more mid-range power, and that's kind of what we're seeing here. We're also seeing some of this might be camshaft, 
the factory camshaft would be pretty good maybe in this range compared to a compared to the BTR hot rod cam but I think most of it probably is runner length and then we see a we see a, a slightly rising boost curve with the M90 as opposed to just having all the boost all the time with the turbo so there's a differentiation a little bit of a differentiation in boost pressure there we see ultimately that the camshaft and the boost curves kind of favored the M90 out at the top and and part of this is is really also the camshaft the the long runner manifold and stock camshaft just kind of want to sign off where the factory power output signs off on a 4.8. So this happens both in boosted combination and in NA combination. So the thing is much less efficient. It doesn't have a camshaft. So, you know, you guys can let me know in the comments, what do you think, turbo versus blower? This isn't a direct apples apples kind of thing. If you want to see that, I have many videos up where we ran turbos versus not just one kind of blower, but three different kinds of blowers on a modular Ford. I did it on a Honda. We did it on a small block Ford. So we have all that up. This is just an interesting comparison for a guy trying to make like 500 plus horsepower and what he needs to go through to do that. If you're trying to do with an M90 supercharger, you need lots of inlet. You're going to need a camshaft and you're going to need a fair amount of boost. In this case, around nine pounds. If you're trying to get more than 500 horsepower from a turbo 4.8, you just need the 4.8. I would put springs in it. You're going to need boost and then intercooler and you, and you have good fuel and away you go. Now we would get a lot more power at this same boost level on the 4.8 with the turbo combination if we had a little bit more camshaft if we had a truck norris cam or an nsr cam or if we had anything else we would make a lot more power turbos tend to make more power they don't have the parasitic loss associated with driving the blower so ultimately ultimately if you want lots of power the turbo is probably the way to go if you want an easy bolt on and then sits up top there and you don't have to do a bunch of plumbing and you don't want the heat then obviously a blower also works i'm richard older please make sure to like share subscribe Ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.